Welcome to Selective Grinding and Bilaterally Balanced Occlusion for the Complete Dentures II course at New York City College of Technology. My name is Professor Oscar Galvis. Let's get started. At this point, the procedure of deflasking should already be complete and your denture should still be attached to your models. The first step is to analyze the occlusal plane for any severe tooth movement and adjust accordingly. The next step is to secure these models to the plaster mounts. This is commonly done with glue. The Air Force recommends using compound. In this video, you'll see the use of tape. It is unadvised to use tape because it prevents from confirming that there's a full seat of the model onto the plaster. So use with caution. When remounting, be sure that the incisal guide pin is in the original position when the teeth were set in wax. Usually, the pin is at zero. With the pin in its original position, it is common to see the pin off the table. A space of two millimeters or less is expected. Anything more, consult with a dentist. Be sure to analyze the occlusal surfaces for discrepancies that may cause premature contacts, like acrylic flash that might have gone over occlusal surfaces. If you cannot visibly see any discrepancies, use articulating paper to double check. In this case, the premature contact is acrylic flash that has a contact point showing from the articulation paper. This point needs to be removed before moving forward. When removing flash from teeth, be sure to be careful not to damage the denture tooth itself, especially on occlusal surfaces. With the premature contacts removed, we can check for occlusal contacts and begin to restore occlusal vertical dimension and centric occlusion. When restoring centric occlusion, Make the corrections by grinding fosses, proximal marginal ridges, and cusp inclines marked by the articulating paper. It is very important that you do not grind cusp tips at this time. Grinding cusp tips can not only affect the aesthetics of the denture, but also the functionality of the denture when we get into bilaterally balancing them. These steps are repeated until the incisal guide pin touches the table and proper centric occlusion is achieved. It is important to note that although an incisal guide pin may touch the table, it does not mean the tooth-to-tooth -tooth relationship is accurate. And vice versa, just because teeth are touching properly, it does not mean that the incisal guide pin is touching the table. Be sure that these two things coincide. The proper contact should display on functional cusp tips and receiving areas in fossas or embrasures. On the maxillary, the functional cusp tips are the lingual. On the mandibular, the functional cusp tips are the buccal. Once occlusal vertical dimension and centric occlusion is restored, now it is time to correct the working and balancing occlusion. To begin, we start with analyzing right lateral excursions with articulating paper and removing any premature contacts if present. When checking the lateral excursions with articulating paper, check the anterior teeth contacts that might be preventing posterior teeth from contacting and remove those surfaces carefully. On the mandibular anterior teeth, 
you will remove the facio incisal surfaces. And on the maxillary anterior teeth, you will remove the lingual surfaces. Once the posterior teeth begin to touch during the lateral excursion, check the excursions with articulating paper again. When correcting the working side occlusion, the goal is to have the canine simultaneously touch with the posterior teeth during lateral excursions. When correcting posterior working side interferences, you will follow the rule of bull, which means you will only grind on the buccal surfaces of the upper and the lingual surfaces of the lower. If done correctly, on the working side, the canine and posterior teeth should touch coincidingly together, while on the balancing side, there should also be a contact simultaneously. Here is a lingual view of the lingual cusps riding the buccal inclines of the lower mandibular teeth. Once the right lateral excursions have been achieved and working and balancing sides all have the proper contacts, repeat all the steps while performing the left lateral excursions until the same results are achieved. Once again, on the working side, you can see the canine and posterior teeth touching coincidingly, while simultaneously on the balancing side you can see the maxillary lingual inclines of the lingual cusps riding the buccal inclines of the mandibular buccal cusps creating balance and contact. The next step in selective grinding is correcting protrusive occlusion. To do this, you must analyze protrusive interferences with articulating paper and grind appropriate inclines while avoiding to reduce the height of cusps. When anteriors prevent the posteriors from contacting, you will grind the facial incisal surfaces of the mandibular anteriors and the lingual of the maxillary anteriors. Once the protrusive interferences have been removed, you may now polish the selective grinded teeth. Using rubber points, you can smooth the roughened areas created from selective grinding. The next step is not commonly performed, however, you can mill in the occlusion. This would typically be done with an abrasive paste in between the occlusal surfaces and performing the excursions in order to eliminate any remaining interferences. Upon completion of selective grinding, the results will show a proper centric occlusion, a restored occlusal vertical dimension, proper working side contacts and balancing side contacts, along with protrusive contacts. All these things will result in a faster appointment time and minimal adjustments during final insertion.